The Sinner's Commentary Where no one is safe from a good roasting There will be 50 people give $1,000 and do it right now or I am finished! Powerful voiceovers with realistic AI voices. Murph AI Studio can take your content to the next level. Try Murph AI Studio today with a free trial with no credit card needed. Check the link in the description to get started. Oh, and for the record, I don't have an OnlyFans account. I see you pervs loving the sound of my sultry voice. Let's do a little segment called Phil's Day Off. Traditional for, for a grown-ass man not to have a job? Not traditional on that. This is working now. You noticed that, right? It started working fully again. I don't know. Okay. Yesterday was my day off. It was what the hell do you do for a living? For nothing. <laughs> you don't do nothing, Cole. It was a very busy day for me. It was also a very warm day here in Washington. <laughs> They got it clean. The power of Tide with Bleach. This regular detergent only gets it this white, but Tide with Bleach gets it whiter. After all, in this business, presentation is everything. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. Probably uh, high 70s, low 80s. So we were sweating it out as my wife and I were going around doing... See? Making sure my breath wasn't stinking. Hey, let me get to the damn fucking part. I really only have two things to talk about about my day off. The first... Oh, man. Uh, no disrespect intended, my good brother, but the word in the motherland is... Uh, you ain't got no job. First is, as I'm grocery shopping, I start to make observations. And I've begun to notice that at my local grocery store, not just there, but other ones too, like all the grocery stores, increasingly now have more and more ads. In the store, all right? Now, obviously, when you're in a grocery store, there's products there to be sold. And this has always been a thing. Any store you go to, any retail store, you may see at the end of an aisle a big featured thing, a big cardboard cutout that's an ad for the product that's right there being sold. Why is this here blocking the aisle? Like, what is this? So if you're not aware of this, and this is at least in the United States, I don't know if they do this other countries. These companies actually pay the grocery store chain money to prominently feature their products in the stores. It's a paid placement. If there's product and product is to be sold. And if there's new product there that I'm not aware of as a shopper that you are aware of, not you because you don't have a job, but you know, the rest of the world knows about ads. You have extreme couponing. You got whole industries that have made their business model and making coupons because of ads or lack thereof so families can save money and in some cases resell it on the market or whatnot because let's be honest that's what happens you get something at a good deal you sell it at a little bit of markup you make a little bit of money you put a little money in make a little money on the back end you know stuff you don't know about philip um but this has been pretty standard philip for a good 50 plus years even back in the days of the Wild West, there were still advertisements, Philip, because people could the, the fruit didn't speak for itself, Philip. The hide didn't speak for itself. The slaughtered pig did not say, there's no no trying to be not trying to put a pun in there. There's no slaughtered meat that says, yay man, I'm four, I'm four dollars a pound. Philip, there's been advertising everywhere, but you would know that because you ain't got no job. Cat, I'm sorry, sister. Um, it's it's basically like it's a it's a it's a way to make money. It's a money making venture to them. Okay. Um. Let's take a look. Let's move me around a little bit. I may move a little bit here because it's very snug in there. So, real quick, retail advertising is the process by which retailers use store advertising to drive awareness and interest toward their products to generate sales from their target audience. You know, target audience, Philip, another thing you don't know anything about. 
you you know you have all the analytics that every YouTuber has. Uh, you don't really know what that is. Through advertising and retail attempts to influence their audience to take a specific action. Now Philip is going to use this leverage here in this article well, or this description, this this dictionary term, how it's described. He's going to try to use this to peddle the idea. Oh, you know where I'm going. Y'all been watching Philip a whole lot longer than I have. And y'all got stronger stomachs than I do. You know, the fact you're on YouTube and you uh, upload a million videos a day and those are monetized. Yeah, that's income. But outside of that, you don't do anything, Philip, with that 1955 computer that you say is so old, even though you got a laptop that was bought, handed to you brand new by Ice Cream and Foles. But you don't know anything about generating income, Philip, because you don't want to generate income. Remember, you don't like taking sponsorships. You don't like taking on, um, you don't want to be the shield who's saying, hey, uh, play Raid Shadow Legends when you could use the $4,000. You know, the one thing that's kind of ironic, Philip, you don't want to be a sellout, but you're a con man and a thief and a liar. I say if you do sh Raid Shadow Legends, Nobody will blame you. Ain't nobody on this earth will say, man, I can't believe Philip did it. They would we would all be like, well, it's about time. So that being said, um, it's annoying. You know what else is annoying, Philip? What you do, Philip. You don't think it's annoying? You even admit to your own audience it's annoying. But since you guys are here to watch the Sinner's commentary. And you want to see me put a nice stamp on Philip's forehead as hypocrite? Watch this in real time. Buckle up. Ads over here, ads over here, ads over there. Everywhere you go, half the aisle, if you're there at a busy time, half the aisle's blocked by these standy bullshit things. Like, the Anybody who's anybody knows about the ad revenue and the partner program and earning, you know, earning money by through advertising on your videos, monetizing videos. Everyone knows about it. It's not some shocking thing. It's is there, you know, um, when it comes down to where YouTube gets his money from ad companies, companies pay big dollars to YouTube to get that product placement in front of the billions of eyes that come to YouTube daily. That's a lot of eyeballs. That's a lot of call to action. That's a lot of advertising to influence people. And there's actually some useful things you can get on there. You know, we do look up some things on YouTube at the shop. And sometimes we, well, there's a couple of times we found product that we actually bought and now use in our store and in, in testing out hardware that we didn't even know was out there at the price that it was being advertised. Because guess what? YouTube advertised what, what we were watching. That is not a bad thing, Philip. That's beautiful. But to someone who don't have a job and to someone who doesn't understand customers, doesn't understand uh, uh, relationships, in our case, it's Christians, fellowship. When you're not used to communicating people on a respectful level, when you're not used to the exchange of goods, when you're not in a symbi symbiotic relationship, means I'm the salesman, you're the purchaser. When you don't have any of those skill sets, Philip, you kind of do what you do. Even Karens take advantage of ads because that's what they do. If you're a company, why would you not want to advertise? I understand his frustration when it comes down to those big signs, but the sign is probably making Philip walk more than he wants to. So he's having to maneuver around the sign oh, and, and we still getting now. We still going through more. We got more cringe for Philip attacking a poor defenseless cardboard sign to show his 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 male beta dominance. But this is what we do as you two. I can say that now. I'm a small content. I'm just a little tiny little guy. But YouTube monetizes my video. I don't get the revenue share of it. But there's there has been videos that I mean ads that just played my videos. I ain't got no beef with that. If I'm blessed in my community and the people, the unique viewers that come by and think that I deserve their their subscription, one day I'll make it to 1K. And who knows can go from there. But the one thing I'm not gonna be upset about, whether that's 
whether I'm a YouTuber or I'm going to a grocery store or I'm going to Amazon. I ain't mad about ads. Now, I am a little upset when ads pop up if I'm watching some things I shouldn't. You know, like when you <clears throat> go to movies one, two, three or one, two, three free movies. You know, you can watch movies and it's, it's illegal. OK, I'm sorry. I re I'm, I repented. I try not to watch it, but sometimes spending ninety dollars to go to the, go to, to the theater and be around people that probably have the same hygiene as Philip. It's scary. I'm out in the country, man. It's scary out here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just don't like going to the movies because it's expensive. So, and I'm a poor preacher. I, I got to watch every dollar I get. I'm not Philip. I just can't be blowing money out, out there because I don't have a ready-made audience that wants to just keep throwing money at me even when I don't do anything. I have an intelligent, smart audience that does use ads, that does understand that companies need to make money. And this audience that is intelligent, Philip, they know a scam when they smell it. They know a good deal when they see it. And guess what, Philip? Ads don't force you to do anything. Now, I'm sure you're going to try to make an argument, Philip, that you, what you do is clearly not the same as grocers, right? No, you would, you would not compare the two, would you, Philip? Because you're, if you're complaining about ads all over the place, that one or a few times you go to the grocery store, surely you're not trying to compare that to what you do. Philip, you wouldn't do that, would you? About this fucking ad shit. Just fucking, you just want to pick it up and smash it on the ground. Just smash it into pieces. Say, fuck you. You stomp it. Mm, mm, mm. Fuck this ad. Get it out of my face. Right? What? Oh. Right? All right, maybe this, that's just me. But I hate that shit. It's very annoying. Uh, there's two large bills coming up that I have to pay this week. So anything that I had saved up in excess is gone, and I don't have those funds. Okay? So all that being said, yes, I'm appealing to you for a little bit of help if you could. If you can tip me over the next day before my day off on Tuesday, that would be stupendous. Or if you want to help out with the cost of those games coming out later this week, I would absolutely appreciate it if anyone out there wanted to buy some credits for the PlayStation Network or tipping. Please subscribe to the channel. Smash that sub button. How many people say smash that sub button? Please like my video. That's all advertisement. And everyone could, every single person could, oh, that's e-bagging. You know? But I guess in real life, outside of the internet, if you advertise it's not begging, it's not. Why not? I don't understand. This is the difference between there's a difference between asking for support. Hey, if you like my content, please by all means support me. It's not mandatory or required to support me, but if you do like the content and you want to see it continue, please support me. That's not begging. That's advertisement. You don't understand, Philip? You came to the right man. Advertising. The activity or profession. So that's why you don't understand, Philip. You, you, don't, you're not, you don't have a job. That's why you don't get it, homie. You ain't got no job. So let's keep reading for those who have jobs and do understand these things. The activity of perf or profession of producing advertisements for commercial products or services. That's pretty basic, right, Philip? Now, you even have a business degree, which is a video that I made before on his business degree, even though, you know, I don't know how he got through it, but you can watch that video and see just how bad and lazy this brother is. The dude has been trained to know all these things and yet can't do any of them. So let's scroll ahead. And we read this earlier. But it kind of fits in here because I needed to reiterate to you, Philip. This is what retailers do when they want to bring awareness to things, Philip. When a new product comes in, you know, when uh, a new video game is, is, is on the horizon, what is sent out? Trailers, advertisement, products to show what? To bring awareness? You know, when you do your react videos, the only way you can react to that video coming out, Philip, is... You have to make the video that comes that's coming out that you're about to make <laughs> like you did video like you make videos. Um, 
But the way to do that, Philip, the way you can react to it is that someone has to tell you. You have to go read because someone has put an advertisement out there. There are whole companies who corporations hire because they do ads for a living. You know, those catchy Geico ads, progressive ads. Those are very catchy for a reason. What are they doing? Trying to drive awareness for those products that they're offering. Philip, you don't do advertising. You do begging. But I've gone too far. Let's keep going. Philip, naughty boy, Philip. Okay, Philip, um, let's uh, let's slow down a little bit and let's look at what begging is, Philip. And let's see if we can compare the two together. Maybe it's us that is inept and, and not well educated or informed about what begging is. Let's find out. Begging, to ask someone earnestly or humbly for something. Ask for something typically food, money as a charity or a gift. No, Philip, that doesn't sound like advertisement, brother. Hmm. Let's go back and we're going to see exactly what that looks like. Here they are side by side. Philip, let's see. To ask someone earnestly or humbly for something. You don't do that. You do ask. Now, earnestly has a scent of of positive, like you're you, you're seeking it because you are in great need, as in you're going to put it to some good use. You don't do that, Philip. So ask for something, typically food or money as a charity or a gift. That's your version of advertising when the real world version of, you know, in reality, where we all live, who have jobs and other content creators that actually have make made their careers into, you know, their YouTube career into an actual job, Philip, to where they can. And they've also opened up doors to, to have other revenue streams, Philip, you know, like businesses do, you know, real businessmen. Pretty shocking, right? But when we look at retail advertising, what is that? To drive awareness toward their products. I can't remember the last time I went to Target or a local grocery store. And every time I seen a stock boy or a cashier, they're begging me to buy something in their store. Just never seen it. Never even seen a manager come up and beg. I've never seen a product try to jump off the shelf into my basket. Just never seen it, Philip. Now, maybe in Washington where, you know, where the ghosts and goblins might live, maybe that might be doing it. But, you know, in the real world, Philip, when we're not, you know, when we're actually working and being human adults that have responsibilities, uh, begging and advertising is two drastically different things. When I see a man on the side of the road that says, uh, help, need food, I don't think he's advertising the cardboard. Uh, he's, just even, he's not even advertising the Sharpie marker. I'm not trying to make little of it, but that's Philip's mindset that he thinks that that man out there that's holding that sign is advertising. What what product does he have, Philip? What product does he have that you're trying that that he wants to drive awareness to? Now, if he says his sign says we'll work, we'll cut your yard for a meal. That's a little bit advertising there. Yes, that, that could be considered advertising. But only by the the thinnest of lines. Yours, Philip, straight up begging, dog. <laughs> straight up begging. You are begging, baby. Please give me some money. I don't want to have a job. I want to do things like eat every day out and, and just and just spoil myself rotten on my WWE champions and eat DoorDash and all of I just want to do I want to burn your money audience not his own that's what Philip wants to do that's not advertising that's begging Philip uh, but is it actually begging we're going to test that is it actually begging what Philip's doing Oh, I'm going to challenge y'all today, brothers and sisters. Well, not you. You know what y'all know. But Philip, let's look at panhandling. You know, that's something I've been looking at from a legal standpoint up in Washington. And trust me, if I could get you on it, I would. I've looked into it. 
had some people look into it from a from from a standpoint of can a citizen file anything on because what you're doing considered as panhandling and technically it's not illegal in your state. So you dodged a bullet there, homeboy. But let's take a look at what panhandling is and begging. Panhandling or uh, begging, also called panhandling, is the practice of imploring others to grant a favor, often a gift of money with little or no expectation of, re of reciprocation. Yep, you definitely begging, Philip, because you, well, you would argue, I'm putting out entertaining content, I'm, I, I, and if you like my content, my philosophy is thus, if I put out entertaining content, you're enjoying it, and I'm enjoying it, then tips would come naturally. Clearly, the tips ain't coming naturally because you're having to advertise at such a rate you what how many times you advertise how many guys you can tell me in the comment section how many times does philip advertise during the stream if he's been playing for 20 minutes and he sees two dollars an advertisement would come up you know if we i might do that on the video just to have a little bit of fun every time philip advertises in his videos i'm gonna put a pop-up on the screen how much how long do you think it take it would take for to fill up the screen i'm curious about that and i will do that for you and i got pepto bismol let me tell you i got pepto bismol i even got i got caplets i got it all baby because sitting through philip's stuff you know what i mean so a person doing such as is called a beggar or panhandler beggars may operate in public places such as transport routes urban parks and markets so it seems that panhandling and begging could be the same thing or is it well guess what in the next slide we get to take a look and see what panhandling looks like in another description so begging i would say definitely what philip's doing but let's look at panhandling from an aspect of where it's more aggressive to panhandle is to beg for money outside on a public street someone who needs money to buy a bus ticket home might panhandle when people panhandle they ask passer buyers for the cash still begging but maybe it's just a more a better form of, of asking okay maybe it's just i'm panhandling versus i'm begging for my money. it's about a pride thing and i look i understand if you're in those kind of situations where beggars cannot be choosers where you have to do something to gain quick income because of a need there is no one that's probably listening to the sound of my voice that has not been in that position or know someone that's been in that position and has probably helped someone out in that position. I know I do uh, a lot of aid in that, not because I'm some charitable individual. I just know what it's like to be there and to see someone else there, it, it does hurt. Now, I'm not a fool most of the time. It means you, I'm not going to be your ATM. And let me tell you, I have done that for people. I mean, two people. Let me just get it right. I have panhandled because I didn't want to spend my own money. I was a selfish son. Yeah, you know it. And I'm telling you, that's what that was me. It because I believed I had a right to your money more than you did. That's why I understand Phillips twisted logic. Now, in my case, I just wanted the money because I wanted to do what I want to. I didn't even give any excuses or try to levy. I need to pay. Well, sometimes I did if I really want if I did had a bill, you know, to be paid and I and I didn't feel like doing the work or I couldn't do the work or I squandered my time and didn't do the work. Yes, I used my friends, I abused my family. I did that. That's why I can recognize these things in Philip. That's the reason why I am a detractor here. That's why I do want to see Philip do better. Because I can relate to him on so many levels that make that should make you uncomfortable. But I'm also living proof that he can change. And let me tell you something. It is true. You got to want to change. But sometimes strongholds don't come down by unicorns, frosted flakes, sugary pops and hugs. Sometimes you got to break them. God breaks people every day. And in Philip's case, I'm coming, baby. But not to get too far off track. Let's take a look at panhandling in this description. And there's a word used that I believe fits Philip like a glove. It's going to be a tight glove. It's going to be a real tight fit, but it fits. To stop people on the street and ask for money or food. So I see that the, so we can look at beggar as a more passive. They're not trying they're not so intrusive. They're not trying to cut you off. They're not trying to to get in your way. They're they're 
at the side where you can come out of the come out of the walk traffic or with the other people and come out and give what you need to and then they can go back in their way more than the panhandling is more intrusive more in your face to a cost on the street and beg from so panhandling has some more in-depth description here but look at that word a cost it just sounds like something that's rough right it sounds like something that punches you right in the face well is this not philip i can end it i can end this segment of the video right here i can just pause and keep moving about my business but let's read because you didn't come here to read for yourself you are here to relax and enjoy i hope good quality content that i can give i'm hoping that you're doing that so you called to hear my melodious country voice to explain that this is exactly philip to approach and address boldly and aggressively tell me that's not philip how many times have philip stopped the whole stream even the chat could have been popping there's some times where as hard as it may lord I, it shocks me too there is times where philip's chat is actually going well and the trolls are minimized or maybe they're just waiting for a good opportunity with Philip, or maybe they're actually engaging in conversation because I've seen trolls and Philip's audience engage in meaningful conversation when either they're defending Philip or they're saying, yeah, I agree with this. There are some times where the chat is doing well and you know it too because he'll get mad because it's not about me. You know, that's Philip, you know, and when that's happening, you would think he'd be satisfied and happy to see it, but oh no, because if the chat's doing well, and he's about an hour into the game and hating it. And he looks up and sees one dollar. Everything on the stream stops. All that positive energy stops because Philip only relates positive energy with money. He don't care about goodwill. He don't care about everybody's having a good time. You know, there might be times where trolls might ease up on Philip. But he just makes it so hard. <laughs> He makes it so easy or you say makes it hard for us not to there are times i'll say i'm going to relax on philip this week and then my fellow brother do these streams or snort hogan to roll up with something and it'll come across my feed and i'm like that's rat song you know and then i'm going off as a wwe character i'm pissed so now i gotta make a video that's why last week i pumped out like three and it exhausted me it exhausted me because dealing in that man's life Pepto, baby. Damn. Pepto. I'm just telling you, it worked. And that's also an advertisement because Pepto does advertise. It's a pretty gross advertisement, but Pepsi also advertises. Coke advertises. DoorDash advertises. You t I know one thing. I know Philip ain't gonna ever complain about DoorDash coupons and their ads. He ain't never gonna complain about that. Why? Because it benefits him. You see, that's that's all that's what's all about with Philip. So he's going to aggressively advertise at every every waking moment that he can to do what to what to cause a problem to get in the way to hinder the progress of his own stream, which could benefit him in the long term. But Philip don't have long term. You would think Philip is streaming as if he's going to die in two weeks. I don't want that to happen, but he's he's always in this extreme distress. Then it's all in his mind because we well also in his wallet because his living expenses is more extravagant than he can keep up with. And rather than getting a real job and putting himself on a budget, he'd rather put the onus. He puts his problems on his community and the pay chairs and those with the, the mentally disabled and those that have a kind heart, those that may be just as miserable as him and the trolls that want to keep him going because he, he, let's be honest, he's better than a reality TV show because it's in real time when this is happening. He keeps going. You know, that's called burdening, Philip. That's not advertisement. It's called burdening. Okay, versus, hey man, I'm starving and I need a ham sandwich. Please give me a ham sandwich. That Is this not a look of a woman who's like, it wasn't supposed to be this way.
the, the monthly goal for Patreon. That's not a good no, sign, no, and it makes no, me nervous no. because does that mean that I fucked up? That, ever, that you know I didn't do anything that was entertaining or enough to make people to want to continue to see me do this? Because understand, Patreon isn't just oh I pledged for that month to see what Phil does that month. No, Patreon lets me pay my bills. If I don't get my, if I don't get Patreon goals, Patreon goals for like three months in a row, I'm gonna be in fighting. Well, I don't like the Patreon goal for this month, you so Phil it. doesn't need that money for this month. You don't need to see that as a goal. No, the whole point of Patreon is that I can keep doing this as a job. Like even if you don't like the goal, I would think that if you support me and you like what I do, you're still gonna pledge so that way I can keep fucking paying my bills and keep doing YouTube full time, or else that's it. I won't be doing daily streams every day. I won't be putting out gameplay videos every day. All that work I'm putting into KO gaming is gonna go to nothing because I'm not gonna have time to work on those videos anymore. Cause I'm gonna have to go bust my ass probably working two, three part time fucking jobs, because that's all of that's available in the United States right now. Just get out of the way. In fact, it just so happened that when I was grocery shopping this week, all right, it was busy. I don't know why, because I always go at the same time. I go in the mornings, usually, um, before I go out to do their stuff the rest of my day. Why <laughs> on a Tuesday morning, the grocery store had so many people in it. I have no idea, but it did. It had a lot of people. <laughs> And there's this elderly guy, you, he can't even walk, he's in one of the motorized scooter things trying to drive through. He stuck. And he says to me, you know, I'm, I'm in line waiting to check out. And behind me, he's stuck in the alley. He says, hey, young man, can you help me? Hey, hey, look here, old man, it's my woman's birthday. Get your old behind out the way. Wait a minute, boy, you been climbing. That so I had to move the standee thing out of the way because he couldn't even fit through the fucking aisle. It was just his cart and the, the standee was so wide, he couldn't fit the fucking cart, the, the, the scooter through it. I had to move it out of his way. And he goes, why is this here? I can't even, I can't even shop because there's so much of this, sh this shit in the store. And I'm like, I have to agree with you. This is stupid. It's one thing if you want to advertise a few products. Every aisle has 10 of these things now. Hi, how much money does the grocery store have to make? Oh, by the way, if you guys weren't aware, grocery stores made record profits during the pandemic. prices to fall. It wasn't like, oh, the grocery stores really died off and man, they, they really didn't make up for that lost revenue. They made more money than historically ever during the fucking pandemic. And now they have to take on an exorbitant amount of advertisements. Sure they do. It's called fucking greed. Now. After you, sir. Or ma'am. Thank you. A lot of people say, what's that? It's Pat. A lot of people ask, who's he or she? It's time for androgyny. Here comes Pat. A bit of a problem, a touch of gout. Gout? Yeah, my whole family, they all had gout. Jesus, that's very unfortunate. My auntie Queenie, she had a foot like this. It's like a size of a small pig. I've got Sounds like a horrifically painful condition brought on by affluence that was considered fashionable and a sign of wealth. Though we know now what causes gout, a buildup in uric acid caused by a rich diet of meats and booze that mostly affects men. It was today we're talking about the disease of kings. That is gout. Balanced acid levels in my body, in particular it's uric acid that tends to build up higher in my bloodstream than most other people's. And it's due to many different factors, you know, unhealthier lifestyle earlier on in my life. Like about 10 years ago. Very special edition of Feasting with the King. My God, I don't think I've ever had this much f gout. Yeah, my whole family, they all had gout. Food in one go of Feasting with the King. Okay, this is insane. So we, it's Vietnamese food today. This is what people voted for over the course of the last week. Okay, what was it? It wasn't the beef, it was pork. What was the pho that we ordered? No, it was the oxtail. We ordered mm. <laughs> <laughs> oxtail. So this is the this is the broth for it. 
But what they did is they separated all the ingredients and put it in this bowl. And I guess what you're supposed to do is open the bowl, pour the liquid in, and then put the ingredients in it. Now, even duct tape can't fix stupid. I think this bag here is the meat, but it is bloody and uncooked. Oh. How many feasting with the king have we been through already, family? We've been through so many feasting with the kings. Now, thank God I have not watched all of them, nor could I watch all of them. I try to limit my exposure to Philip just enough until my stomach starts to implode. Then I, I'm out. But, Philip, you, do you realize that you, you order more, you spend more on DoorDash than you do probably on your groceries? You may shop, what, once, twice a month, maybe. You spend $200, $300 a, you know, a week um, on various activities. Um, they're not activities, Philip. You, you're blowing them on something. Um, my question is, Philip, you always get these dishes that are you know, ethnic dishes, which you know there's going to be some amount of preparation that you may have to do, unless it's pre-done, pre-made for you. Um, the way you looked at those ingredients, Philip, and the way you examined that blood packet, I just, maybe I'm late to the party, but you can't cook, can you, bro? That's why that gouty foot is coming up. You eat so much fast food that it, people roll up at your house thinking it's Wendy's. It's got to be. You looked at those ingredients, Philip, those fresh ingredients. And you look like someone put a girl in your hands and you thought you knew what to do. You know, you said, going, man, what do I do with this wife? She has all these extra parts and all these things that can be used for reproduction. What do I do with it? you looked at cat the way you looked at them ingredients? You don't know what you are doing, do you, Philip? Hey, man, I look, Philip. It, it, I can give you the birds and the bees, baby. We can have that conversation. I mean, but. Did anybody teach you how to cook? Have you ever tried to learn how to cook? I understand you suck at video games. I get that. But you, at least you try. There's an effort. But have you ever cooked anything besides that sugar Italian? Let's just act like that didn't happen. But you do realize that feasting with the king, you always get the fattiest, saltiest stuff that you can find. And strange enough, here's the part that's really strange, Philip, and I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going. How come as much as you are <clears throat> broke and as much as you are uh, <clears throat> sedentary because you don't move and do very much, how come your gout just seems to just not happen on screen? Everything else happens on screen, Philip. Is this, a, is this, did you, did, when you moved to, from Connecticut to Washington, did that Washington Coast air, that fresh, gouty air, did it actually heal your gout? Much like it healed your high impact damaged back. Did it miraculously heal better than Wolverine? It just, you just seem to have all these ailments that just don't necessarily add up all the time, Philip. But to, to say that you really don't know what you're doing in life, Philip, I think I might be, I think I might be on to this one. Now, I know probably Eric, come on, man, you know he knows a little bit about it. I don't know, man, he looked at them ingredients like he looked at his wife in the first time we saw that video, that cringy introduction to Catherine video. He, he looked like he wasn't comfortable sitting next to his wife. So I, so when I saw the ingredients and then I saw, I remember that video, it just made me think. Does Philip really know what he's doing on either side? Hmm. Um, eating too much of certain kinds of foods like red meat, um, drinking too much. As I told you guys in my past, I drank way too fucking much. Gives him power. So there's all these factors. There's also hereditary. My aunt had it and I never knew. And then when I told my parents I had it, my aunt fesses up. Oh yeah, I've had got my whole life. I just never told anybody. He's, kind of, he's an ass. Yeah. And he's dumb. He's a... The reason I'm bringing this up, 
is because today it's not that big of a deal. Very rarely do I get any kind of a flare up with gout. And the reason is because I've The reason is you don't have gout, Philip. You lying through your teeth. You don't have any gout. Why are you still peddling that lie, dog? Come on, Philip. You got the gout like you have that bad, destroyed, blowed out uh, disc that you said you got. But you sit longer than a, a injury like that even allows. Philip, come on. You ain't got no gout. Well, hold on. It you do you like to call yourself the king of hate? I would like to call yourself the queen of hate, but that it, I know that's a little low. But Philip likes dark meat. That's why he goes up to Tevin. That's why he, all his black detractors he can, he got to get after him because you know I, I think I'm I'm going too far off. It's the gout, man. It's that dark, yummy red meat that you like so much, Philip. You, you went and got a Vietnamese dish and you found a way to make it unhealthy by making sure you got some gouty meat that you can put on it. Why? Because you deserve the best, Philip, right? Feasting with the king. You can't be feasting with the king with a croissant. You're going to look weak. You're going to look like you're full of crap. No, you got to have meat and you got to look like a try, try to appear as an alpha male, Philip. But that red meat, ain't it, it ain't helping you, homie. But I, I really got to say, I think you're lying, dog. Because you said your, your gout cleared up much like your exploding back did. We both know the only thing that cleared up was your debt. And that's because of bankruptcy, Philip. But you can put yourself back in the poorhouse if you keep door dashing your way. Now, I get you got to beg for your money to keep your wife in the house. And whoever that extramarital lover that you have, that young man... That person, your friend, that eventually we'll cover that in the future episode. Y'all got to stop eating out all the time. I mean, you looked happy with that young man, uh, your friend. You know, uh, so um, I know everybody thinks it's cat. I, I got my suspicions that it's a. Let's just say, Philip. Um, look, Philip was happy in that picture and he was happy in that car. And I just they were probably going to a fast food restaurant. And Philip, if you do have the gout, that's not a good way to go, buddy. Not a good way to go. Just in my lifestyle. I don't eat those foods like red meat and shellfish and incredibly fatty food. We do it as every day. We do it as pet food. We do it as groceries. We do it as food like I used to eat all the time. I don't drink as much. You know, something is wrong with you. Uh Philip, um, not trying to be funny. This is I'm I'm gonna be serious about this. Nobody believes you don't drink as much, Philip. We know you drink still, Philip. And there's nothing wrong with occasionally imbibing. But when you say you don't drink as much, that just means when you wake up, you're not drinking with your breakfast. If you do indeed drink breakfast. I don't think you're an alcoholic. I think you're close. But I'm theorizing here. Only reason why, because in my family, alcoholism is a real big deal. You know, we do like to party. I don't now, but there was a time in my life where I was drunk every day and I enjoyed it. I'm not going to sit there and tell you I did not I sure did. But and I really I wish I could say I had things I was running from, but I really didn't. It only became a problem when I realized when things were stressful, I would go drinking. And I realized, yeah, that's the issue. That's the trigger. So. Thank God he removed that from me. And I never really asked for that to go. It just kind of went. And I, But I know people that suffer with alcoholism. It's not that simple. And Philip, the fact that we know you're lying, that you still drink, you can't even look the camera in the eye, Philip. That's a tell that you know you're not telling the truth. And I'm not trying to make fun. I'm not trying to joke with you about this. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I know that that bothers you. I know that it bothers you because the fact that you stuttered on saying how much you drink, at least you acknowledge that you're drinking. But when you're trying to spin a narrative and you're a known liar, you lie to even yourself. Things like this makes it hard for us to believe you. I think you're still drinking, Philip, not because, uh, yeah, well, I know you're depressed. You say you're not, but I know you're depressed. I know you're going, you have some mental health concerns. You cannot live the life that you do and be this delusional and think and, and 
let's be honest you do care about what the tractors think you do listen to the memes you do go to kiwi farms you do watch what people are saying on reddit because those things affect you there's nothing wrong with admitting that philip but you have this strange idea that you're supposed to be bigger and better than that but you're just human philip you have issues hey, very few people don't have issues the only difference is we don't broadcast it and act like we don't you know some maybe do some use you know the internet to kind of be a uh you know sounding board to get things out and that's fine but philip you're not in that position to where you, you know every time you reveal more about yourself you reveal more of the pain that you're going through and it hurts my heart to hear it it hurts my heart to see it you don't look well you don't look well we know that you have gastrointestinal issues. That is a fact. We know you eat healthy because you have what? It's damaged you gastrointestinally. You even know that you're sick, Philip. The alcohol doesn't make it better. All it does is turn the volume down. But it's still playing, Philip. It's not the cherry juice that's going to be able to help your dog through the gout. It's got to start here, and it's definitely got to start in your heart. You definitely got to repent, dog. And it, they, this is a good, a good position in this video to get a little serious with you, because Philip, you're not healthy, man, and I'm worried about you. And you know, eventually, when you don't, when you keep lying and you keep sinning against yourself, you keep sinning against God. You know what's gonna happen, Philip. It starts to create a cancer and gain green on the inside of you spiritually. Your soul is sick, which means your physical is sick. And you can't run from inevitability. You just can't. Philip, you got a problem. You need to start addressing it. And you should address that thing quickly. Because it don't get easier as you get older. It gets harder. Back to our video. Once in a while, I'll have a drink, but I used to be drinking all the time, and now I don't drink nearly as much anymore as I used to. And other lifestyle changes and things, all right? One of the lifestyle changes that I instituted is I started drinking cherry juice, tart cherry juice in particular. Now, it's well up like a balloon because there's these crystals, uric acid crystals that have built up that are stabbing you in the joint, and it causes monstrous inflammation and tons of pain. It's incredibly painful, excruciatingly painful if you get a really bad flare-up. Okay, <clears throat> since I started drinking this juice, which by the way, um, is very healthy for you. It's a very, there's not like no sugar added juice. It's hundred percent. It tastes like shit, but I have it one glass a day at dinner, a big glass of it. All of a sudden, like I don't get flare ups anymore. It just, it kind of cured it almost. <laughs> There's one, two, three. Nobody gets the faithful out of their wheelchairs these days any faster than Benny Hinn. And when okay, not to say that if I don't eat poorly, you know, if I eat poorly for a whole week, yeah, it's, I'm going to get it again. But for in general, this juice works. And it's funny because at one point I was actually questioning. I was saying, you know, I wonder if this juice really works. I'm going to test it. And one week, last before, one of these weeks I said, ah, oh, I'm just not going to get the juice. And for a week I didn't drink it and my fucking foot went whoop. I was like, ah. Oh, my foot, why did I do this to myself? And it took, no exaggeration, about a month of drinking the juice again to get enough of it into my system, into my metabolism, that the, the swelling went down and it hasn't come back since. <laughs> come on, Philip. That's like saying fat-free pork. Philip, you got the gout because you eat bad. And you like to eat bad because you're not spending your own money. Isn't that amazing, Philip, that there's a direct correlation to your lion and your gout? Ain't there's a direct correlation. Either you lying about that gout or the gout is exposing you for what? For being a con man. How do I, how does that work? Because you're not eating healthy. You like to say you, you, me, you and Kat are eating healthy at home. Look. I know that that I showed the new the the video that's going to be coming. There's a little snippet of um, whoever that man, whoever that person was in the car. Now I have my theories. Now a lot of people say it's Cap. There's some folks that 
showed some side by side imagery with uh, her aging over the years. And, and people can change. People can blow it up. I get it. I've blowed it up on camera, thin down, blowed it up. I understand. But that's some transformation. It's kind of like your gout. It transforms your foot. And so if you have an eating buddy and both y'all eat like crap, gout flares up, homie. I mean, it's just, it's kind of part of that. So every time you have a feasting with the king and you're having salt with everything else and your gout don't show up two, three, four, next two weeks or not, and you have another marathon and the gout is not flaring up again, you ain't got no gout, dog. But you definitely got a eating partner. I want to know who that brother is. Okay. Why am I telling you this? It gets down to nut cutting time, and suddenly it's revealed that... This cherry juice, all right? There's, there's different brands of it that you can buy. There's the store brand, the middle-of-the-road brand, and the incredibly expensive over-the-top organic brand. Store brand for a bottle of this juice, which is roughly two giant cups, which I drink one cup a day, is like three to four bucks. It's fucking expensive. You're talking like, Fuck you. It's like two dollars a glass, but I need it. I need it for my health purposes. I have to get this. I tried not drinking it, and my fucking foot explodes. Okay. <laughs> what? The middle of the line tart cherry juice, which is not the store brand. It's it's a it's more of a you know regular brand. Is like seven dollars a bottle. What? <laughs> So you're talking from three to four dollars to seven dollars a bottle. It's almost double the cost. The expensive brand, the organic one, is nine dollars and fifty cents a fucking bottle. I don't even get that. What? For two cups of juice. Okay. So obviously, I need the store brand, right? I need the cheap one. I can't. I don't have twenty, thirty dollars a week to drop on cherry juice. It's fucking insane. There's the line, and you just lost it. Okay, I think we've had um, our fun for today. Uh, well, it's never having too much fun when it comes to Philip, but let it's time to examine Philip's idea and where his uh, or his examine his what he what he calls his priorities, because clearly. His priorities are not based on his health. It's not definitely not based on his wife. It's definitely not based on his stream. But when it comes down to your health being an issue and you're not doing the very bare basics to try to take care of yourself, um, that's pretty scary. It's pretty scary stuff. So his gout, which again, I doubt that it's very real. However, on the off chance that it is, and I'll definitely admit when I'm wrong, I have no problem with that. His idea of what's expensive is it's way off i mean are, are we are we surprised at this point that philip doesn't understand economics are we surprised at this point that philip doesn't understand um how businesses work are we even surprised that philip doesn't even know how a budget works no none of us are shocked by that um as you see here on the screen this guy now, I want you to think about it. So he's balking at seven dollars. He makes I mean, if we could if we could get inside Phil's head. No, let's not do that. That'll drive us all crazy. If he thought about budgeting, if he really had some long range thinking, he would look. He would make that much in one stream. He can pay for two or three or four bottles. But knowing Philip. He buys it one at a time because he can't fathom the idea of shedding seven dollars on a mid-market brand. He has to get the cheapest. And when he gets the cheapest, he's only buying one. He balks at four dollars. He thinks seven dollars is outrageous and he thinks nine dollars is unheard of. This is your health that he's so concerned about. Right, Philip? You're so concerned about your health. But when it comes down to spending the money for it, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't part with that. Yet, when it comes down to video games, you can buy three of those a week or have your audience do it. Eric, that's part of my business model. Okay, I get that. What about when you do your marathon events and you're ordering Feasting with the King? 
that's that's a business that's not a business expense that's a luxury well i'm doing it uh how are you rewarding people by you eating they're not getting any reward for that unless you consider mukbanging as a as something that you're giving as a reward for them but they're not partaking of that what's the last time you ran a contest at all philip besides the the stupid ones you know where you are offering to play a video game poorly if they if they win some event by giving you money I mean that that's just what it is where where's uh wh how is it that you could spend 38 40 something dollars on food for a marathon but you can't spend that exact same amount on stuff that can benefit you long term and short term remember you need this 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 drink as if it's medicine wouldn't you think that you want the best? And if it's organic, that's even better. It means it's even cleaner than your store brand and your cheap off brand. You know, super cheap Dollar Tree special. But you, you just hit Philip's idea of long term. It, it just doesn't exist, apparently. But when we look at this, this uh, what's on the screen here, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Postmates, um, we all know full well that these things are high. I didn't realize how high. Damn, it's high. So delivery apps drove up the cost of subway order. So this is a guy from TechNix or TechCrunch or whatever it was. I was, I was. Hold on, let me take a look at the last one so I don't get it right. Ted Fix, Tech Fix. So look at a six inch turkey sub. Two of them, eleven ninety eight, Grubhub, DoorDash, fourteen ninety eight, Postmates, fourteen seventy eight, Uber Eats, and at the restaurant. Okay, so Grubhub wins on pricing by a dollar at the restaurant. You look at the delivery fee. Holy snikes, one ninety nine, and for DoorDash and Grubhub, Postmates two ninety nine, Uber Eats three ninety nine. The restaurant doesn't deliver. Well, we know some some subways. I can, I'm sure start to deliver. I'm not sure. I don't eat at Subway, so I couldn't tell you. If anybody in the comment section knows the Subway delivering, fantastic. Service fee one twenty nine for Grubhub, DoorDash one twenty two forty two to Postmates, Uber Eats two twenty two. Sales tax dollar twenty one twenty nine one thirty three one twenty six. Sales tax you can't control. That's part of government getting any money. Miscellaneous. Look at the last bottom. Look before we get to the markup. Take a look at the total cost from eleven ninety eight to sixteen forty six. Now, five dollar difference. You know, is that's acceptable for Grubhub, right? I mean, that's that's basically you spending gas. <laughs> it's a gallon of gas right now. Nineteen twenty six for DoorDash. No doubt, Philip is not eating a six cent sandwich at all. Twice. No. He's going to be spending money on something of Italian or something with flavor more than something that's semi-healthy. Twenty-one fifty-two at Postmates and Uber Eats, twenty-five an eleven dollar difference from when it started out at Uber Eats at fourteen seventy-eight at the top till it finally got down. That's a ninety-one percent markup. So. We know Philip used DoorDash, so 46% markup. So he's spending easily, easily 27, let's just say 40 bucks if Cat eats. Okay, 40, 38 bucks, 40 bucks, right? 20 and 20. And I still think I'm lowballing because that sounds like it's going to be more because they like to eat their um, their appetizers, things of that nature. So you're looking about 45, 50. Let's say 50. 50 is, 50 is perfect, right? 50. So, between fifty, fifty dollars, Philip, Philip can't break bread, and and he can make fifty dollars on the stream. Now, right now, he's struggling, and that's self-inflicted because we all know what what got him to that point. Because what did he do? Ungrateful, an ungrateful son of a biscuit. That breadstick is definitely the most ungrateful son of a chicken we have ever seen. I don't think anybody's seen anything like that, right? So. What could Philip have done?
could at fifty dollar he can get that a stream. Or if he says, "Hey guys, uh, this stream is specifically for get raising money, so I can get my juice, and then I'm gonna buy a whole case of it, and then um, and not to mention he can go to Amazon for that. Amazon has fresh groceries, and you know they got ads and sales, and and it's gonna be cheaper through Amazon in a lot of areas. Philip has no excuse for not one investing in his health other than he what the how do we say it what he puts in his body what he cares about eating what he cares about himself he's it's reflective about how he feels about the rest of the world he doesn't care about taking care of himself he damn sure doesn't care about taking care of his podcast <laughs> podcast he definitely doesn't care about taking care of his wife he definitely doesn't care about his health I mean, he cares about his health up to a point, but let's be honest, it's not on his high priority list. Why? Because money is. He doesn't think that in order to spend that money or make that money, Philip, you got to be alive, dog. He don't think that. He don't think that far ahead because that's just not Philip. Philip isn't interested in long term. Philip isn't interested in investment. He's not interested in investing in his future, investing in his business. He doesn't have a business, but or investing in himself. Everything is 100 percent dedicated to his what? His instant gratification. He's excited about playing video games as he is with sleeping with his wife. I wish I was kidding about that. I'm not even joking. There's no intimacy in that relationship because there's no intimacy with your audience, Philip. You know, I know my people. I see my familiar faces. And for those that I don't see, I look, I know who's part of my channel. I know who's in the community. And I thank God for every one of you. Whether you believe the way I do or not, I'm appreciative of you. And for those that do comment, I hope that you know that I care about you. That's why I take the time. Not because I'm so busy. No, y'all deserve a response. It's not just... Uh, well, just leave some comments in there because the algorithm likes it. No, I like it. It gets me through my day when I'm get, having some rough times and I get to see some funny interactions. Philip has no intimacy with his audience, let alone his wife. And guess what? If you think he even cares about his health, we all know that that's not true. It's scary, man. It's scary that this human being goes on in life the way he does not thinking of a possibility that he could die one day that one day he could uh, gain a, a grotesque disease which i don't want him to get but his situation can spiral out of control very fast we live in a time where look let's face it nothing that we're eating is healthy i don't care if you're if it's organic or not something some kind of pesticide and i'm not here trying to champion anything i'm just saying Philip is not in the great best of health, not to say very many of us are, but a lot of us are a lot more healthy than Philip because we live somewhat of an active lifestyle. Philip's activity ranges right, right, what? Wake up, drink, eat, sit down, bathroom, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, eat, sit down, sleep. That's not active. That's not an activity. That's a routine. And none of it has to reflect. None of it does anything to help him physically. Yeah, he said, "Well, I take a walk here and there." When? When is it happening, Philip? Because you're online more than anything else. Are you? When is it happening in your dreams? I hate to tell you, burning calories in your dream is easy. It's not. I get it, it's not. You got to put willpower to get to want to get out there and want to walk, especially in the summertime. Hey, go go to a gym and go to Gold's Gym, or or just try to do anything with physical nature. I get that takes willpower. That takes desire. I get it. A lot of us will we'll, we'll, we'll use excuses or we have the reality of it where we just don't even have enough time. We may not have the money or we just don't really want to put that forth effort. I get all of that. I can understand it because I do it. What I can't understand is Philip's concept of too expensive when he buys video games that he may play once and that 60 bucks is burnt. And yet he is crying about four dollars, seven dollars, nine dollars. Can you imagine if Cat wants something? How much is it? He don't care if it's gonna make her happy. It's how much is it? Oh, you can get a cheap. Why are you gonna buy a new shirt there? Let's just go to the Goodwill and just get whatever you want there. But it can't be more than five dollars. Cheap bastard. 
You know, Philip only cares about stuff that tastes good. Philip only cares about things that make him happy. It's a hard, dark day. Pigs can fly hell or freeze over when Philip thinks of someone else. When's the last time you heard Philip think about anybody else that you can believe? Don't worry, I'll wait. Philip is glad to spend money on things that burn up in his hands. Philip is glad to try to keep this facade of a business going by trying, oh, there's new games coming out because I got to get the next shot. I got to get the next fix. He's like a crackhead when it comes to money. And it's all about whatever his pastime hobbies are, which can't be. There's, there's not much of a hobby because he's online more than it. You can't tell me that boy's enjoying anything he's doing except the stuff that happened in offline. When he eats food and gets food, man, that's the most excited you'll ever see him. Yet he's still complaining because oh, they didn't fix it right. It has one. It has one ounce more grease here. But he's never happy. Doesn't matter how much cherry juice he's drinking. This boy is toxic enough to where it's overriding. I don't care how much I gotta drink two glasses for eight ounces a day. And you and this dude probably buys one, maybe two. If we're if I give him, I give him a little bit of breather there. He keep maybe buy two when he could be buying caseloads. One stream can furnish him for two weeks if he really wanted to. But the idea of Philip investing in himself. No, nah, that that that's not even realistic to him. And that's where we're sitting at right now with Philip. That's where Philip is. And we have all known that. And it's sad to watch. We watch a man. Pretty much live his life in a bubble, a toxic. Fe uh, septic bubble. And this is the only place that he feels he has power is online. Doesn't even feel he has power over his body. Doesn't even try to, to make adjustments in his life to make things better. Everything is about the moment and nothing else. It's, it's tragic, man. It's tragic to see this stuff. It, it, it sometimes, you know, if I think about it um, too much, it, it breaks my heart, man. And here's a guy. Day after day, doesn't even care about himself and tries to convince others that he's not miserable. Philip, your delusion is going to kill you one day, Bubba. And I hope it. I hope I hope to God that you wake up one day. I really do. Well, you know, it's time. The Lord must have his say. And thank God for that. Here, Jesus is saying in Matthew 15, 11. It is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. You know, here Jesus is basically um, getting after those that are religious. You know, he's after those that, why are your guys eating on the Sabbath day? Why, why, you, we're not supposed to eat pork. You know, the Lord said in the Old Testament, we're not to eat pork. And here you are eating out there having a pork sandwich. Here you are having a pulled pork sandwich paraphrasing here and just embellishing a little bit but you know we live in a time right now where everybody well you got two two sides of the population everybody's trying to fake health everybody's trying to look happy and healthy you got organic making explosive gains uh everything i'm this is 100 organic here this is organic there you know and and you got gym rats you got people everywhere you got influencers trying to become uh fitness instructors you got you got everybody that has good genetics on Instagram or whatnot, thinking that they can peddle something to try to get at your wallet. You know, oh, you need to eat this. Prepare it this way. Do this. Do that. It's not what you eat. I don't care how healthy you eat or how poor you eat. It is not what you eat that's the problem. Muslims, I don't eat pork because that. Yeah, but if you're if you're beating up somebody, you're cussing somebody out, you're yelling and screaming and you're abusive, it doesn't matter. You ain't eating pork. You acting like a pig. And, and you know, that's why you what you wonder if I why I hate religion so much, because one's as fake as hell. Two, it's as fraudulent as hell. And three, it ain't of God. And it has done more damage to people than anything else on this earth. Atheists 100 percent right about religion, 100 percent wrong about God. I'll say it all the time. 
I'll stand with the atheist before I stand with the religious man any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Why? Because they believe outward expression. Look, I'm looking. I look like I looked the part. You've seen these gurus of people at these great bodies and fantastic figures. Some of the worst individuals you've ever talked to in your life, if they even take you serious. It doesn't matter how obese or in shape someone is about what they're eating and what they're consuming. It's about what you say that does the damage. Doesn't matter if you have a body of gold and a mouth full of crap. Doesn't matter if you got muscles to die for, but what comes out of your mouth can cause people to commit suicide or cause people to feel horrible about themselves and put to put people down when while you're trying to look like a king. It doesn't matter. You can eat clean and be crap. You can have you can put I only do a thousand calories a day. Yeah, but you're 40,000 calories full of crap. This is the reality that Christ is talking about. And guess what? Philip is the embodiment of that. It ain't the gout that makes you terrible. It's your lies, dog. Always lying. Man. I mean, let's, let's, just, let's just put it all on the table because I've, I've kept you guys um, at a reasonable time, I hope. But let's, let's, look, at, let's look at this from an easy standpoint. I'll let, I'll let you guys go because you guys... Got more things, better things to do after you. Uh, hopefully, I entertained you some. But when we look at Philip, and he always talks about positivity. He's always talking about um, he's he's changed and he wants he wants to be better and he has changed. He has become better and things of that nature. The minute he opens his mouth, when somebody asks a question that he deems is off the wall, and he demeans them and spits on them. That tells you right there, feasting with the king is feasting with a bastard. You're watching a man eat, and this is to you, to, to Phyllis followers now. You're basically paying for a man. You're, he's living off, he's a parasite living off of you. And it's the same man that if you don't tip, if you don't give him the rightful, the rightful place to have your money, you ain't crap. I'm using crap a lot in this last, episode, this last uh, segment here. Think about that. You are only you're only one donation away from being abused. Doesn't matter how much you can. Doesn't matter how much you super chat, sh super thanks, um, super sticker. Um, doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how much a uh, subscribe gift a membership. It does not matter because once it's in his bank, you don't matter anymore. This dude treats his audience. Like a grocery store. What I mean by that? They're all ads for him. You know, everything's a discount to Philip. Everything is, is there for his taking. And at what by the time he gets to the express checkout lane, he doesn't want to pay anything. But guess what? His audience pays. You see, it's reversed when it comes to Philip. Philip likes to say. He's a variety streamer. No, he's not. He is a panhandler that takes from a variety of people. Guys, I love you so much. I hope that you were entertained by this video. Um, know that uh, the channel's growth is 100% based on you. I would not be here if not for you. And uh, one of my, uh, well, one of our community brothers and once told me, don't take for granted what we give you. You know, we're watching and I take that very, you know, very serious. That goes to heart um, because, you know, a lot of people take their YouTube career, their YouTube channels for granted. I mean, I'm not saying everybody does, but I see a lot of it. You know, it's just like it. You know, once you guys give a YouTuber a platform, you know, what is he what he does with it after that still must reflect who his community is. So um, you may not believe the way I do. But you can stand with me on the base morals of what makes a good human being. We can agree you don't have to be a Philip, you know, and if somebody is being a Philip, then we can we can do something as a community to make sure we bring awareness. You know, not every detractor is a troll and not every troll, not every, you know, criticizer is a troll. A lot of us out there do give a damn about Philip. 
And it's just unfortunate he doesn't give a damn about himself. But I just want to say I care about you. You matter to me. Every like, every subscribe, every comment, every every watch, every, all, the watch time, all of those things means just you're giving your most valuable asset, your time. And I hope I never waste it. I love you guys very much. Consider subscribing to the channel. Like and share your um, your opinions. Oh, oh, I forgot. There is a, I got a test for you guys. The, there's going to be a contest coming up. And I want you guys to guess which one is Philip. So it's going to be contestant one, contestant two. And guess what? The, the, the winner and the reveal of who which is which will be in the next episode. Love you very much. See you guys soon. Have a good week. I'll probably see you a little bit later in the week because Lord knows Philip's going to do something stupid. And I got to chime in. Love you very much. In Jesus' name, I'm praying for you. Amen.